Hi, and welcome back for the second episode of Small Town Big Story, where we bring you the lost stories of the little cities of Los Angeles. Today, we're going to be featuring Venice of America, one of the most unique places you'll ever discover. These stories of our city are produced by Siki and Son, and proudly brought to you by our sponsor. Who doesn't love it when the circus comes to town? But what if the town itself was the circus? Well then, welcome to Venice, the coolest of all the California beach towns, where the carnival never stops. Like much of the Southern California coastline, the area that would one day become Venice was a marshy swamp inhabited for thousands of years by the Tongva people. There are few written historical references to the area, and the wetlands were not desirable land for agriculture. In 1819, this land was a part of Mexico, called Alta California, and two families, the Machados and the Talamantes, had been given the rights to graze their cattle here. In 1839, a 14,000-acre land grant, entitled Rancho La Bayona, was given to the families by Governor Juan Alvarado. This grant included most of the current west side, including Venice, and the area remained sparsely populated and of little interest to the rest of the country. But as the turn of the century approached, one man's vision was about to change all of that. In 1891, a wealthy tobacco mogul named Abbott Kinney arrived with his partner, Francis G. Ryan, and purchased a one and a half mile strip of beach property just south of the brand new town of Santa Monica. Kinney spoke six languages, was highly educated, and a world traveler who had fallen in love with Venice, Italy on a walking tour there. He envisioned a smaller version in the Mediterranean-like climate of the Southern California coast. The partners began by building a resort called Ocean Park, complete with a casino, horse racing, a golf course, a boardwalk, and a pier. With the addition of more partners, they continued to acquire land and build south of what is now Navy Street. Upon Ryan's death in 1904, the partnership was dissolved, and Kinney and the others flipped a coin to divide up the land holdings. Kinney won the toss, and to the surprise of everyone else, chose to take the undeveloped marshland which made up the southern half of the land. It was here that he would build his Venice of America. Like many visionaries, Kinney had his idea ridiculed by many as Kinney's folly, but he was undeterred and his planned seaside resort quickly took shape and opened to the public on the 4th of July in 1905. Tourists rode into town on Pacific Electric's Venice Short Line Red Cars. This line to the beach was heavily used until 1950 when the big blue buses took the place of the train cars. Once in Venice, there was much fun to be had. People strolled along the streets, marveling at the Venetian Renaissance-style architecture on the arcaded business street. The colonnade on Windward and a few columns on Ocean Front Walk are all that's left today, but you can still see the faces of Kinney and a young female friend of Felix Peano, the Italian sculptor who carved them, in the capitals of the columns. Today, Abbott Kinney Boulevard, called the coolest block in America by GQ Magazine, stretches from Venice Beach to Pacific Avenue and offers trendy and high-end shops and eateries and street festivals. A few of the original buildings remain, such as the Brig, founded by Bay Brandelli, a boxer in the 1930s. It was the ultimate dive bar for many years, but now caters to the young, trendy, and wealthy who inhabit and visit Venice today. Old Venice was filled with dance halls and ship-themed restaurants on the original Pleasure Pier, a heated saltwater plunge for bathing, and camel rides, among other attractions. Lodging was had at the St. Mark's Hotel, and charming cottages were available for sale. There were roller coasters and a ferris wheel, but perhaps the most exciting were the gondola rides on the canals and in the lagoon after Kinney had drained the swamp marshes. Thousands of people flocked to Venice, giving it another nickname, Coney Island of the Pacific. The nearby Ocean Park and Lick Amusement Piers also opened, providing Kinney with competition. A fire destroyed much of his pier shortly after Kinney's death in November 1920. The family rebuilt but the town had grown so fast 
that the canal and city infrastructure had fallen into disrepair, and Venice was annexed by the City of Los Angeles in 1926. The old Venice City Hall and Police Station now survive as the Beyond Baroque Community Literary and Cultural Center, and most of the rowing takes place in nearby Marina del Rey. In 1929, oil was discovered in Venice, and soon the area was covered with oil wells, which helped with the economic fallout from the Great Depression, but filled the beaches and waterways with oil residue, keeping tourists away. During Prohibition, liquor was smuggled through tunnels from the beach to the basements of the windward speakeasies. Los Angeles did not care for the circus-like atmosphere of Venice and removed the railroad, paved a few streets, filled in many of the canals, and tore down most of the piers, otherwise neglecting the town. The remaining canals were restored in the late 1970s, now known as the Venice Canal Historic District and featuring some of the most picturesque and expensive real estate in Los Angeles. Lawrence Welk and his band, the Champagne Music Makers, played Venice's Aragon Ballroom for 10 years, bringing music and tourists back for a while. In 1955, he introduced Venice's own Lennon Sisters Quartet to the nation on his popular television program. Four of their sons and nephews later formed the popular band Venice, who today enjoy worldwide popularity. The extensive Lennon family has lived in Venice since its glory days, over a hundred years ago. By the end of the 1950s, the tourists were gone, and the majority of the residents were lower-income retirees, homeless people, and drug addicts, while the attractions had been replaced by liquor stores and pawn shops, giving Venice a new nickname, the Slum by the Sea. Enter the Beatniks in the early 1960s. The counterculture had reached Southern California and had found a perfect home in Venice. The cheap apartments on the boardwalk and the sleazy vibe of the beachfront were just what this group was looking for. Their hangout was the gas house, where they laid bare their alternative lifestyle and relationships for all to see. It has been replaced today by a row of funky stalls on the boardwalk, just in front of the Center for Youth Culture and Art of California. The hippies replaced the beats in the later part of the 1960s and filled its streets and canals with all the extremes of the summer of love. Venice today has inherited this legacy in its street art. You can find murals of all types throughout the city. Besides featuring Abbot Kinney himself, you may find Jim Morrison of The Doors, who called Venice home before the band achieved fame, and of course the endlessly changing art at the Venice Pavilion. On Westminster Avenue, you can see the apartment house where Morrison sat on the roof and wrote many of his songs. In the early 1970s, the city of Los Angeles built a bike path that ran from Torrance to Santa Monica, bringing a new flow of people to Venice. The bike path runs along Ocean Front Walk, otherwise known as the Venice Boardwalk. With the invention of the polyurethane wheel, roller skating along the bike path became hugely popular, and shop renting bikes and skates popped up along the boardwalk. The tourists had come back to Venice, and shops and restaurants began to flourish once again. The city got yet another nickname, the roller skating capital of the world, attracting visitors from all over the world. The carnival was back in business. There's a lot to see and do at the Venice Boardwalk. There's the world-famous Muscle Beach, an outdoor gym where you can watch bodybuilders work out. Arnold Schwarzenegger, bodybuilder, actor, and later California governor, was a regular there at one time. Be sure to look out for Harry Perry, who for the last 47 years has roller skated along the boardwalk, wearing a turban, playing his guitar, and singing songs about space aliens. People watching is always entertaining in Venice. After checking out the boardwalk, it's time to hit the beach. Venice has some of the best surfing in Southern California, so grab a board and catch a wave. Skimboarding and parasailing are also popular, or just relax in the cool water of the Pacific and watch for dolphins playing in the breakers, then read or nap in the soft sand. The beach stretches from the left side of the Venice Pier, a popular fishing spot, to the Santa Monica Pier, which also has carnival rides, restaurants, and shops. The history of skaters in Venice began in the early 1970s when a few local surfers found that they could use their moves on skateboards and began to skate local pools and sidewalks on waveless days. Known as the Z-Boys, they revolutionized the sport and gained national attention with their daring stunts and rebel attitude, earning Venice a new nickname, Dogtown. Skateboarding will even be an Olympic sport in the upcoming Olympic Games. The historic, pentagon-shaped Oakwood District 
was originally the only part of town where African Americans were allowed to live and buy property, although they provided much of the labor for the original tourist attraction. Much of the management of this work was led by the African American entrepreneur Arthur L. Reese, originally a janitor, who became the head of maintenance, decorations, and later exclusive contractor for the famous gondola concession. Upon his death, Abbot Kinney willed his own home to Irving Tabor, his African-American driver, butler, and personal advisor. Tabor brilliantly moved the home to Oakwood in order to be able to take possession. Despite many challenging years and shifting residential makeup, this historic Oakwood community continues to be embraced by its current and former inhabitants. Venice properties continue to change hands and be repurposed, as Silicon Beach tech companies and other major brands have grown up in and discovered the area. With rapid gentrification, many of the original charming cottages and bungalows have been transformed into mansions, often hidden from the street. Some tension has arisen between the longtime inhabitants who fear their friendly open neighborhoods and cool beach vibe disappearing. Hollywood stars have also discovered what is perhaps the prettiest and most desirable of the Venice neighborhoods, the walk streets. These are a handful of pedestrian-only streets that Kinney modeled after the streets in Venice, Italy. The houses are cute cottages set back from the walk paths and covered with so many trees and flowering plants that you don't realize how close together they are. Recent gentrification has led to social as well as architectural challenges for the Oakwood community as well exemplified by the ongoing discussion about the fate of the iconic First Baptist Church of Venice in Bishop E. L. Holmes Square, currently planned for conversion to a large private residence. Another longtime focal point for the neighborhood was the iconic pet store, Allen's Aquarium. Founded in 1963 and located on the corner of Lincoln and Brooks, Allen's drew customers from the poorest to the wealthier. While the business was recently moved, Current building owner and Hollywood producer John Favreau is keeping the exterior and the original signs intact. The nearby St. Joseph Center serves the community with hope through empowerment, offering homeless outreach and engagement, housing and mental health support, educational and vocational training, as well as serving the homeless hot, nutritious meals in the restaurant-like setting of its Bread and Roses Cafe. There are a handful of schools in Venice, including Venice High, which has been used as a set for several movies. The most memorable being Grease. Glamorous and comedic 1930s Hollywood star Myrna Loy posed as Venus rising from the sea when she was just a 16-year-old Venice High student and still graces its entry. St. Mark's Catholic Church, not quite as big as its namesake in Italy, offers a K-8 school. And there are a handful of public elementary and middle schools in town. Families enjoy the renovations at the Oxford Retention Center the flood control facility, formerly known as the duck pond, because so many unwanted pets were dumped there. Throughout its 115 years, Venice has charmed people of all walks of life, all beliefs, all ethnicities, and all socioeconomic strata. It's always been home to the down and out, the high rollers, and everyone in between. Its combination of crazy circus and laid back beach vibes make it one of the more unique places in the United States to live or to visit Come for the carnival, live for the beach, and stay for the love. Welcome to Venice of America.